Hello, my name is Jose Ruiz and I am going to be showing you how to solve this specific proof using index notation. But before I explain or show you how to solve this problem using index notation, I want to explain to you why index notation is so important. Uh, it allows us to do more complicated algebraic manipulation than the vector notation that works for simpler problems in Euclidean 3D space. Even there, many vector identities are mostly easily established uh, using index notation, as we're going to see here. And when we begin, begin discussing four-dimensional curve spaces, our reliance on algebra for understanding what is going on is greatly increased. So it's easier just uh, using index notation is just a lot more easier. Um, so another thing to keep in, or before I start, I want to go over the cheat sheet that our professor, professor gave us going from array notation into index notation, but the ones that I want to go over the most are the convention notation of dot products and cross products into index notation. Most importantly, the cross product, because we're introduced to two new uh, variables or symbols. We have the levi civita symbol and the Kronecker deltas. And I want you to just pay attention to this, uh, this proof right here, or this identity right here, because we're going to be using it for our problem. So when we're approaching this question, we want to start from the outside in. And <clears throat> what I mean by that is uh, we start from the outermost part, which would be the dot product, and the innermost part would just be the cross product. So let's start with the cross product or the dot product. So here we have a cross B with an indice of I because it's a dot product. C cross D with an indice of I. And then we move in from we move in into the cross products. So we know that the the cross product gets a Levi Civita symbol. So we have Levi Civita symbol I J K. A picks up the J indice and K picks up or oops. B picks up the K indice. Still the I indice on the outside. And then for the C cross D part, it gets another Levi Civita symbol, but it's a different, different letters of the indices because they cannot be the same, unless they're the same uh, cross products of A cross B. So here we're going to do L M N. C picks up the M indice. D picks up the N indice. Because uh, these are the, both the same indices, we could combine them together. So then we get Levi Civita symbol I, J, K, Levi Civita symbol L, M, N. Then we combine the variables A, A sub J, B sub K, C sub M, and D sub N. And I wanted you to pay attention to the to the identity because uh, when we have two Levi Civita symbols, we're introduced to a new to a new identity. We get the Kronecker deltas, right? And this is basically showing you how to how we get the Kronecker delta on the right hand side. Um, and the underlying colors are basically uh, say that you didn't want to use the the letters I J K. You want to use some other letters. Uh, it'll we just multiply the inner indice J times the inner indice M, and we get Kronecker delta J M. And then we do the exact same for uh, inner indice and the Levi Civita symbol on the left side. Inner indice K times the outer indice N. So we get K N minus the inner indice times the outer indice, which is J N, and then the outer indice times the inner indice, which is KM. So now we have the, the identity. We can rewrite this as Kronecker delta, oops, Kronecker de delta JM, Kronecker delta KN times A sub J, B sub K, C sub M and D sub N minus 
corner for delta j n corner for delta k m times the exact same variables. So these Kronecker deltas become useful because uh, we want to switch the variables on these, we want to switch the indices on these variables, right? So the way we do that is we multiply this variable by the Kronecker delta. So here we're going to do Kronecker delta j m times a sub j. And when we do that, the variable or the indice changes to m. So then this becomes a sub m, and then the Kronecker delta goes away. And we do the exact same for b sub k. Kronecker delta k sub n times b sub k, and that becomes b sub n. So now we're left with a sub m b sub n, c sub m, d sub n. And usually we wouldn't do this for all the same questions. It's just more like uh, the way you could just manipulate it into getting what we want on the right-hand side. And that'll be more clear as I solve this right-hand side. So now the right-hand side becomes, we're going to switch the variables a sub j and b sub k. So a sub j becomes a sub n. b sub k becomes b sub m. And then c of m and d sub n stay the same. And then now we want to match the variables with the same indices. So we have a of m with c sub m, b sub n with d sub n minus oops, a sub n with d sub n, b sub m with c sub n. Now it, could, it kind of becomes a lot more clear uh, because when you have the same indices, you have a dot product, right? So then this becomes a dot c. Then we have b dot d minus a dot d and b dot c. And there we just proved how to solve this proof using index notation.